Welcome to Tech Talk, the one-of-its-kind television program where we show you the technologies that are driving Belize forward and the key actors in the driver's seat. Tech Talk features everything tech, basic tech such as your phones and heavy tech like artificial intelligence, and the future of tech, including 5G and solar panels built right into the roof of your house. Without a doubt, technology is one of the primary catalysts to drive countries and economies forward and Belize appears to be well on board. So here we are for Tech Talk. I'm your host, Kim Barrow. Tonight, we get into an area of technology that has a lot of people equally excited as it is scary, the integration of technology into our banking system. Everyone wants to be able to control their funds using computers or cell phones, but no one wants to lose their money to a hacker. To, a greater, to get a greater understanding of tech in our banking sector, we featured the National Bank of Belize in tonight's BizTech segment. I welcome the General Manager of the National Bank, Mr. Alvaro Alamina, and the Operations Manager, Francisco Magana. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. So before we get into tech, kind of give our viewers a brief overview of the National Bank and its core values. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, I wish to thank the producers of TikTok for having us here tonight. Um, we are most grateful for this opportunity to tell our viewers a little bit about the bank and uh, what we have been doing so far. Mm -hmm. um, the National Bank of Belize, or NBB as we prefer to call it, is 100% owned by the government of Belize, and by extension, it is owned by all Belizeans. It is your bank, it is our bank. So just to give you some background, the bank opened in September 2013 during a time when the banking system was charging up to 14% or more for home mortgages. And generally interest rates were at an all-time high. Um, despite qualitative and quantitative measures that the Central Bank of Belize took, um, the commercial banks did not budge and they held on tight to their lending rates. Deposit rates went down quite drastically from those 10% that it was down to 2.5% that it is now. But the banks just kept the interest rates sky high. So here came the formation of National Bank of Belize. And uh, we took a bold move at that time. And we commenced offering uh, rates of 5.5% on mortgages, home mortgages, mm -hmm. unheard of at the time. Uh, as we all know now, and uh, to cut a long story short, all the banks followed us. And today, interest rates in Belize are, went from sky high <laughs> to bottom low. Okay. And uh, there's a fierce competition going on right now, if you pay attention, with, uh, with these interest rates for home mortgages, right? Okay. But we'd like to think that we were the pioneers of those low interest rates. The impetus. That's correct. Um, when the bank started out, we only had one product at the time, the home mortgages. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the last few years, we've worked hard, my staff, myself. And today, we offer a range of services that rivals any commercial bank in Belize, similar to what the others offer. We do deposit uh, savings accounts, checking accounts, uh, term deposits. We offer uh, safe deposit lockers, night safe facilities. We have online banking, just like the other banks. We, uh, we have a range of retail uh, loan products for everything legit, uh, vehicle loans, um, home, mor home mortgages, education loans. Uh, we do refinancing, consolidation loans. You name it, we do it. Uh, over the last two, three years, we've developed our uh, corporate division, which uh, caters to the business and the corporate community because uh, there's, a, there's a huge gap for that, especially in areas where uh, the other commercial banks might not want to delve into like agriculture and these, uh, these other sort of uh, economic drivers. We, we are big on those. A little bit risky, but you have to find a methodology to, to go through those. Um, so basically we, we started that way. And uh, as you know, these, things, these banks take time to, to set up. It's a young bank, five years old. Mm -hmm. So we had to spend a lot of time putting in the fundamentals, the, the structures, the policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. 
uh, making sure that all these products are well, uh, well defined to suit the consumer and uh, the central bank. At the same time, we had to embed um, issues such as EML, CFT, uh, do your customer procedures, um, look at the risk functions, compliance, uh, uh, governance. So we've done pretty good. We've come a long way. And I could go on and on, but I know with time, this is where we are right now. And, and what role has technology played in this? Um, how should I answer that? Uh, one of the main drivers of the bank, that's in our core values, um, is to make sure that this institution be remains customer-centric. Okay. And in saying that, we want to make sure that we address all the needs of our customers and deliver innovative, uh, affordable, and very efficient products and services. As I said earlier, we started from scratch. We built all these products, these range of products. And uh, however, we had to look at how we deliver them. Here we were, we were only five years old, and uh, all the other banks around, some have been around for over 100 years, and they have extensive networks throughout the country. And the world. So, so we had to figure out what do we do? And that motivated us. So we had to dig deep and see what can we do to make a difference? Because we don't have the resources to build these banks all over the, all over the country. Mm -hmm. So we have looked at building these innovative uh, customer service centers. I don't want to get into it too much because uh, Mr. Magana, our operations manager, will get into that. But um, in terms of technology, and I, I wish I could really expand on it more, we're working on some really cool and uh, innovative uh, products right now and services okay. that the public will be seeing within the next six months. It has me excited right now. And yeah. it will be, those will really be high-tech products. Right. So uh, in, a, in a way, that, that is the, the way we're moving with technology. Yeah, that sounds exciting. Um, so are you projecting a return on this investment or is this something that you're doing just to be technologically focused? No, 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 no. We, as, as a strategy, we had to we had to figure out that we don't want to get into the banking system having 14, 15 banks all over the place. Right. Our philosophy eventually is to put the bank in people's homes, in each, each consumer's home. And that is what drives us to do what we do each day. We might not achieve it in the next year or two, but that is where we're going towards. Okay. Okay. We're going to be nimble, flexible. Efficient. Efficient. Consumers want turnaround time quickly. That's critical for them. They want good pricing. Mm -hmm. And they want innovative products like what they see in the, in the first world countries. Right. And we will try to provide that as much as we can to them. Excellent, excellent. Viewers, we'll now take a look at something exciting that the National Bank has incorporated in terms of technology. They're now running new branches and they're heavily relying on their new techie customer service centers. Let's take a look at this video demonstration. The National Bank of Belize continues to live up to its commitment to utilize technology in their operations to enhance the ease of doing business. In their new branches, the NBB has introduced customer service centers which feature hardware and software, effectively reducing operational costs, removing long lines, and creating a virtual link between customers and customer care reps based in the bank's main office. Good morning, welcome to National Bank. I am Anna and I will be helping you today. Hi, good morning, Ms. Anna. I'm here today because I'd like to open an account with you guys and I'm wanting to know about the process of how that works. Sure thing, it's very easy. You just need to hand me a valid social security card or a valid passport and a valid water or light bill. I have my social security card and my water bill here with me. Thank you so much. Can I hand it over to Mr. Waite? He will scan it for us, okay? Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Betancourt, for handing over the documents. I have access to it. I have already reviewed them. Let us start the application process, okay? Yes, sir. I will be asking you sensitive information so we can identify you later on if you ever call the bank and need assistance. If you have any questions during the interview, please do not hesitate to stop me, okay? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay, are you married? No. Okay, first name is Aisha, yes? Yes, A-I-S-H-A. Can I have your mother's maiden name? You were born and raised here in Belize, yes? Yes, I am. Let me just quickly fill in your social security card number, okay? Thank you so much, Ms. Betancourt. Your account has been opened. It was a pleasure. Do you have any questions? No, everything was pretty straightforward. I'm looking forward to having an account with you guys. Thank you so much. Take care. That's, that's very cool, very interesting. Obviously, very easy to interact with. So how exactly does it work? What, what technologies are involved? Well, to understand how, how it works, I would want to give up a little bit of the background of how it came to be. Mm -hmm. um, National Bank's mission and vision talk about innovative, cost-effective products um, and how we will serve the community. Mm -hmm. When the, um, our strategy for 2018, 2019, 2020 was to expand our presence in, in Belize, um, it was a challenge, as Mr. Alamina said, we, we, our, our budget is limited, it's not like the other bigger banks. Mm -hmm. We have to be innovative, that was part of our, of our mission. And um, so we started brainstorming, what can we do? Of course, one of the first choices was, oh, let's open a, a branch at what, wherever the location may be. But this would be very expensive. I mean, it would require a lot of human resources and financial resources. Yeah, the typical brick and mortar type. Correct, yeah. and which uh, we, we need to step away from because we need to be um, cost effective. So um, another idea came up, we were talking about ITMs, interactive teller machines, mm -hmm. which is basically an ATM on steroids, which where you can do a number of transactions using the ATM the ITM, sorry, and um, interact with, with our staff at the different locations. However, it had limitations um, because we need to follow our EML or Anti-Money Laundering Act and mm -hmm. our Banking Act. There are certain regulations in there where oh, credentials from customers need to actually be certified and verified by a, by a staff mm -hmm. uh, that is physically present at, at the location. So the ITMs were not an option. But um, we brainstormed some more, and there is where we came up with the, what we call a customer service center, which is not a branch, but just a service center. But we do provide all the services that a branch would, would provide. Um, our first customer service center opened in Orange Rock in 2018, November of 2018. Basically how it works, the, the, there are two staff in that office, mm -hmm. a loans officer and a security officer. And in the video you saw the big building, however we are just using a small portion of that building. <laughs> Is in, in, the, in the video you just saw, it, we are just using about 500 square feet oh, of, okay. of space. That's very efficient. Yeah, very efficient. To give the customer all our, our, our services. If a customer needs a loan, they can walk in, make an appointment, a loan officer is available there. However, any other service you need, you can connect with a staff from Belmopan. And um, in fact, it is very efficient because now we have two customer service centers, one in San Ignacio and one in, in Orange Rock, and we are using our human resources to our full capacity. How do they connect to the staff in We have band? computer applications, okay. so the person can com communicate seamlessly with uh, our staff in Belmopan. Or it, it can be a customer would want to interact with a supervisor or a manager, what have you. We have three stations at each of the customer service centers where a customer can basically just sit down, press a button, and communicate with, with uh, our, our staff at at um, our Belmopan branch. And it is, uh, like I said, we are using our, our human resources to our, the full capacity because the same customer service officer that is servicing Orange Drug can be servicing St. Ignacio. Right, right. So tell me something. With this efficiency, and you have so little people in the branch, 
customers don't give any feedback to say, well, you know, um, that seems like a little bit of people, is this a secure thing for me to be doing? Is this really a bank? What's been the response from the customers? <laughs> well, at, at first, when we opened the first um, office in, in Orange Rock, I remember a lady coming in, and when she stepped in, I guess in her mind, she's thinking I will see a number of tellers, a number of customer service officers, et cetera. And when she said, a, a giant culture shock from what we're used to normally from a normal bank. Correct, really, correct. You know? And when she stepped in, she looked around, um, and the customer, the, the loan officer there approached her and told her about the, the, the office and how it works. She was, she was amazed. Uh, she sat down in front of the computer, pressed a button, and got the services immediately. Okay. And from then on, I guess the, the, the word got out on how these how this centers are working. So it's like a desktop computer? Or, I mean, what's in the video, it seemed that they sat down, put on the headphones. Are they, is it a computer or is it? It's a it's computer, a but it has specific applications so we can communicate. Um, we were, in fact, it can be a, a different type of, of um, desktop. It can be a kiosk in a kiosk okay. firm. But we decided to go with this because it's what um, people are acquainted with. People know how to use a computer, so it's easy for them. They recognize the computer. The, a lot of people- More, more familiar form factor, what you're Correct, okay. correct. And yeah. even the, the screen itself is more familiar. It's like maybe your WhatsApp or your Messenger where mm -hmm. you click the, the, the phone icon and right. you're connecting. And this so is a platform same, that you guys developed or something that you purchased or? Well, it's something that we did purchase and further developed it. To, to cater our, our needs. And it's going to be developed in, even further because with the application, we can do a number of other, other things. For example, if I, for right now, if I want to do an appointment, I need to call the bank, uh, set my appointment. But with this application, we can actually have the customer set their own appointment. Okay. So an in, inbuilt calendar type system. Correct, correct. Okay, so and this system, this application will allow you to offer more services down the line. Some of those exciting things that you were correct. referring to earlier. Okay. That's correct. So has this tech center business model improved efficiently tremendously? I mean, is it reduced cost a lot for you guys? Of course, it, it is, uh, it, it's very, very efficient. I mean, we, like I said, two officers in and running what a branch would, would normally need okay. for, to provide all these services. It's very cost effective. And again, we are using all of our staff to their full capacity. And of course, in the future, we envision moving to other areas of Belize, still not increasing our staff complement much more. We just need other two, another two staff and our staff from, from, um, from from Belmopan will complement the, the workload, no? Okay, that's very interesting. And then in terms of the um, bank's technology, how do you ensure <coughs> cybersecurity? Well, for any bank right now, um, cybersecurity is something very important. You know that everything now is digital. We, we just talk about online banking, about transactions being <coughs> done through, through a computer. Mm -hmm. It is very important and we do have our framework, our infrastructure, and basically cybersecurity is just the process on how we protect ourselves from cyber attacks. Mm -hmm. I mean, 50 years ago, the banks would train their staff on how to protect themselves from robbers or from bomb threats. It's basically the same robbers and bomb threats, but only because now it's dig digital, digital okay. correct? So now we have to protect ourselves through, through um, <coughs> different software and, and hardware. Um, and the, just last year, the central bank actually took the initiative and established uh, a committee that um, engaged all the banks so that it is easier for reporting and exchanging of, of information, which makes it even more secure for the entire banking system. Okay. So there are some real cyber threats here in Belize I mean, towards the banking system. I mean, it, it's a bank. It, it, uh, Somebody's trying to take that money. Correct. Somebody wants that, that money. So, in fact, there are hundreds of attacks, but because we, we have um, the, the infrastructure, we are secure. And actually, the, 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 the most vulnerable parts is where the process involves a human interaction. Hence, we also train our staff about cybersecurity and inform our customers on how they can protect themselves. 
because from social engineering. Correct, because I mean attackers are looking at the weakest link, correct. and there's the, where they want to penetrate. So we, we of course train our staff, inform our customers because it's something that happens every day. You might be getting a it's number a part of, of the world we live in. Correct. Know. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So viewers clearly. There are benefits being taken advantage of in the banking system in terms of tech. Stay tuned because when we return from this short commercial break, we'll take a look at how your mobile device may soon be able to facilitate all of your banking needs. Tech Talk is brought to you by the Public Utilities Commission. Welcome back to Tech Talk, one hour television program where we showcase the basic and complex technologies that are being employed right here in Belize, making our lives easier, processes more efficient, and services more effective. I'm your host, Kimana Barrow, and I'm joined by the National Bank of Belize's Alvaro Alamina and Lisha Medina, who's taking over from Mr. Francisco. <coughs> Before we continue, BizTech, let's take a quick look at another installment of Street Tech. Do you know what APN stands for? APN? No, <laughs> I don't know. What does APN stand for? Um, I'm not sure. What does a G in 3G stand for? A, gigabytes. B, generation. C, grand. Gigabytes. Gigabytes. I'm guessing grand. Which is larger? 400 megabytes or two gigabytes? I guess gigabytes, two gigabytes. So the correct answer to what does an APN stand for is access point name. Most of us use 4G daily and still think that G is a little tricky, but it means generation. So 4G is fourth generation. That was a lesson in tech news two weeks ago. And for the last question, two gigabytes is larger than 400 megabytes. Viewers, earlier we got a good understanding of what the National Bank of Belize means for our country and how they've embraced technology to power their objectives and goals. Now we move on to another exciting aspect of their operations, online banking. I understand that you have some online banking services and you may have some unique projects in development. Kindly discuss with us. Um, to tell you more about our internet banking, um, we would first, I would first like to tell you that we implemented the system just May of last year. Okay. So May 2018 is when we went live to the public and offered the service to our customers. And in that short amount of time, we have been able to um, integrate some unique features okay. that would enable our customers to have to avoid to avoid having to physically walk into the bank. That sounds so for services that customers may no longer have the time to to wait in long lines or customers um, find it difficult to get time off of work, mm -hmm. they can do so online. So some of the things that we have online is, and how it works is that our customers have access to two tabs. The first tab is the request services tab. So for instance, if you are running out of checks and you want to apply for additional checks or you want to apply for a checkbook, you can do so online. Mm -hmm. Um, at the same time, if you have lost your card, for instance, you can also apply online or if your card has expired. So if you want a card renewal, okay. you can also apply online. And one of the coolest ones to me is the deactivation of your ATM card. So if you believe that you have lost your ATM card or if it's misplaced, you think it's misplaced, then... As I commonly do. Yes, you can also send us your request. Once it's no during normal working hours, we will receive it immediately and then contact you mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. and block the card. Okay. So in that same fashion, um, the following day, if you find the card, you can send us your request and we will reactivate it for you. So we will immediately contact you and reactivate your ATM card. So um, these services will allow, of course, faster processing. Mm -hmm. And once you send your request, it reaches us immediately. So the second part of the, of the service is that <clears throat> once you submit your request to us, then you can also view the status of that service. So once you send so us immediate feedback. Yes. Okay. So once you send us that request, then your status will be updated. Mm -hmm. So when you initiated that request, you would have seen service requested on your platform. And then once we update it, then you will see requests under process. So you would have known that the bank has acknowledged your request and it's being processed basically. That's very interesting. So can you, do you have any statistics that would say like how many of your customers are online versus going into the, the, the brick and mortar branch? We, as of May of last year, we have approximately 300 customers that mm -hmm. are already in our internet banking, which, are, which is a significant amount to mm -hmm. us. Um, based on our customer base. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of our customers, we do get a lot of positive feedback on one of the additional features that I was going to mention is the feedback feature. So you actually have a tab on the platform where you can send us any message that you want. So if you want a balance inquiry, or if you want to um, give feedback on a bank policy, Mm -hmm. Anything that you want to send us, you can send it online and we will immediately see your response and send you the feedback. That's very good. Right? So. And so in, in terms of the, 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 the services, you've given us some examples like you know, your ATM card. Mm -hmm. What other things that you know, other banks don't offer to you guys? Some offer? of the things that we are looking into, of course, are the other um, features that all the other banks offer, which is the utility bill payments, um, social security payments, um, customs, customs payments, ASICUDA, and um, our one in specific have the option to do instant transfers. So you can send transfers 24-7 to any other bank. Oh, really? Um, and it goes out immediately our banking system allows for straight through processing. So it's automatic within minutes to banks that accept instant funds transfers. Okay, so, that's, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, customers have, of course, um, access to their balances, their account balance, their available balances online. Um, they have access to e-statements Okay. Um, so you can save it to your computer and manage your accounts online. And um, so these services, <clears throat> some of them are banking hours only, and then some of them you can have 24 hours a day. Well, the one that you would like to deactivate, it would have to come um, during normal working hours. Which so that you can transfer money process. at any time. Yes, the transfer, yes. That's very it's, good. it's immediate. But any other service, then yes, we get it during normal working hours. Okay, mm -hmm. and so does, can you say that Digi's fiber network plays a role in your ability to offer this kind of service? Digi fiber network? I mean, the, the speed of the network has to play some role in you know, your ability to offer this service, would you say? <coughs> yeah, it does. Okay. And um, it's a pity we couldn't have more people on the panel with the federal IT manager who could tell us more about that. It's a small table, <laughs> it's a small table, forget <laughs> Yeah. So what is APSS? Okay, so the APSSS, or also known as the APS3, um, is, our, is Belize's national payment system. And um, it stands for Automated Payments and Security Settlement System. So if we remember, um, prior to the NPS, Belize had a very slow and inefficient manual payment system as there was no infrastructure in place that would automate the clearing and settlement of payments. 
So um, for checks, for example, prior to July 2017, um, customers had to physically walk into the bank to deposit their checks, and then the bank had to physically take the check to yeah, the well, other you know, banks. You have to pay that special fee and you have to wait clear, three to seven if you days there in for time, clearing. You get them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I exactly. That. So, and then the other part of the reform is that um, transfers to other banks. If you go into your bank, if you walk into your bank and you want to send a transfer to another bank, then it also involves a manual system. Mm. So now what the system does is that it allows all banks to connect to a local network. Mm -hmm. And through this connection, then it gives us the opportunity or it enables us to provide fast services so like a digital to customers, type of thing. correct, to customers um, safely anywhere okay. in Belize. So um, now with the ACH, for instance, which is the automated clearing house, it's a component in the APS tree and it allows us to send a digital image of the check. Okay. So customers no longer have to wait um, seven days for clearing. They can receive payment by the end of the following day, T plus one. Wow. To day plus one. And then um, in addition, the transfers, customers now have different payment options. Okay. So they have um, RTGS. They have EFTs and IFTs. RTGS, real-time growth settlement. So customers can send transfers for higher values, mm -hmm. 50,000 and above to any other bank. EFTs, they can send it um, over the counter or online as well. And these are for lower value payments and they clear in sessions. So you will get it at the end of the day but it goes by sessions, like okay. morning, noon, and so, so, at the end so of the day. So would you say that the, the APS3 has, what, what other online services has that allowed you guys to, to offer to the public? Other online services? Well, so, so for example, one of your clients, one of your customers, is there some, say I'm a, I'm a client and I want to be able, I have a business that's online. Is there some mechanism that you can now offer to where I can collect from on, online? Collect what exactly? Money from my clients. Somebody wants to pay me for building a widget. That would be, um, I would say, a part of another project that would come in. Okay. Um, as the central bank would roll it out in phases, so okay. in projects. So, so not yet, soon. So that would, yes, that okay. would be like the. I'm looking forward to that particular the service. Direct debits. <laughs> so are, are there any other untouched opportunities that APSS or APS3 allows you that you've identified and plan to pursue? Similar to what you just asked, um, it would be the mandate management, okay. which is what the central bank has in its upcoming project. And what this would do is that it would allow um, customers to come into their bank. So our customer comes into National Bank and gives us a mandate. So a mandate is a form where the customer would provide their authorization and allow us to debit their account at another bank. Okay. So okay. Um, for whatever reason, whatever payment they, they want, so that, that is the next upcoming that we would be able to do okay. that. And okay. then, of course, the customer would also have the ability to use a utility bill company, mm -hmm. you know, a utility company where they could do, the, they could do something similar, okay. give the company that and, authority. Mr. Alamir, so on a whole, would you say that the, the, the APS3 has stimulated business in Belize, as it, in your opinion? Uh, yes, I, I can't quote, but I believe the statistics that we've seen from the central bank, it's, uh, it keeps growing. And what that does, uh, Kimano, is that uh, as it grows and more transactions are pushed through the APS3, it will lower the costs. And I'm sure the central bank are looking at those critically. And as those increase, I think the costs will start going down. 
and it will make uh, banking more affordable for, for more people and get that uh, financial inclusion that we we all seeking as a, as a country. Sounds good, sounds good. And in general, outside of even APS3, how does technology allow money to move faster and cheaper in Belize now? Um, how would I answer that? When you wake up in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. Before you open your eyes, you stretch your hands, and what do you grasp? Cell phone. Your mobile device. Mm -hmm. So apart from the APS3, the next medium of uh, payments has to be mobile technology. And uh, some of the banks have mobile banking, but those only do traditional uh, services, like moving funds within the bank, that sort of thing. Right. You want to see a system where, like what she mentioned with mandate management, where with your mobile device, you can send a payment, I can send a payment to you. You have your account to National Bank, you have signed your mandate, and you can, I can decide to pull that money from any of the other four banks in Belize and get it to you instantly. Really? A uh, peer-to-peer uh, service. But right now, the, like what uh, Leisha said, uh, the APS3 can only send credits. Like I can wire a credit to an account at another bank. Mm -hmm. But the next phase of the APS3, which is the mandate management, will allow us to pull debits from accounts. And if you have the mobile technology, move them immediately to somebody. That sounds very interesting. So you can be in the, on a Sunday in, in Cayo, and your friend in Placenza tells you, Kimano, I have a mahi-mahi, a 30-pound mahi-mahi for 20 bucks, mm -hmm. but I don't have the 20 bucks. Right. Instantly, you can pull that from any of your bank accounts anywhere and send that money instantly to him. Yeah. And then he pays the fisherman. The fisherman goes to the gas station and pays for his gas using his mobile device. So those are the technologies I think will come on. It's already working in the US with Apple Pay and these type of new technologies. Mm -hmm. And I think in the future, Belize will get those too. Okay. And um, in terms of Bitcoins and cryptocurrency, can you give us a crash course? Can you tell us if you think it's possible for that kind of stuff to be introduced in Belize? Woo. Sorry uh, to put you on the spot. I mean. Yeah, I don't. Uh, this question is one that causes um, all of us to pause. <laughs> and uh, as a US senator once said, cryptocurrencies, perhaps uh, most notably Bitcoin, that's the one that we know, has done three things. It's captured the imagination of some. Mm -hmm. It struck fear among others and confused the heck of the most of us. <laughs> 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 but hold on, let, let, us, uh, let me tell you. Beyond that noise, people, I mean bankers, economists, uh, consultants, accountants, and many others have very limited knowledge about cryptocurrencies. It's, it's a fact, it's something new. Some even fail to understand the, the basic concepts. Mm -hmm. um, I know we're running short of time, but in the absence of that, I will go through as simply as possible because I figured you'd ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll try to run through for the viewers, from my point of view, what, the, what a cryptocurrency is, right? Mm -hmm. Behind most cryptocurrencies is a simple technology that most of us have heard as blockchain mm -hmm. or blockchain technology. And that technology is basically a system residing in multiple computers that allows for peer-to-peer -peer financial ledger recording of all transactions occurring in that network. Doesn't make sense, right? Let me try to go a little bit further. <laughs> as each transaction becomes part of the network, it is known immediately by the entire network, which then gets it confirmed and validated. Okay. Because with cryptocurrencies, confirmation is a critical concept. For example, if the transaction is pending and unconfirmed by the network, it's subject to a tax uh, fraud, it can be forged or altered, but once it's confirmed and validated by the network, mm -hmm. the, the blocks, so mm -hmm. to speak. It is set in stone. Okay. You cannot change that. 
So, sounds like we're going to need a whole show for that. It cannot be reversed and becomes part of a record of historical transactions that, that just cannot simply be changed. And this process does become a bit complicated because it have to go into like uh, mining, how you okay. mine Bitcoin, and what's the role of the miners. But the miners role is very important is that these are the guys that validate the cryptocurrency. Okay. Or the transaction, sorry. Um, most currencies used in the world are issued by a central authority, such as the Central Bank of Belize, who issues and controls the, the Belize dollar. Mm -hmm. The major difference between that and a cryptocurrency is that the cryptocurrency has no control, no central authority. And that's due to its nature that it's decentralized, okay. going through the entire network in blockchain technology. And because of the way the blockchain works, transactions that go through that system, they have a lot of protocols for privacy and, uh, and security. Mm -hmm. And the transactions are simple and they're very cheap. So Bitcoin tra transactions are way, way cheaper than using a traditional bank to do your transfers. Okay. Uh, coming to your question about Bitcoin and Belize, I believe Belize already has miners mining Bitcoin. Really? Yeah, because in, in 2010, myself and uh, my partner, we had about 38 mining machines in, uh, in Jacksonville, Florida, mining Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we were mining Bitcoins. That was back in 2010. The price had, was very low and fluctuating. Mm -hmm. But what happened to us, we bought uh, these uh, computers that were, uh, were lemons. <laughs> or like in Belize, we said we bought pussy in a big. <laughs> and we had to abandon that project, and uh, I never got back into it. But okay. um, for Belize, I see um, in the future, Bitcoin could become a form of payment. And you never know, I mean, um, we might have ATMs in Belize. Maybe the National Bank might do it one day that accepts Bitcoins. Yeah, I saw one of that on a Caribbean island. They have an yeah. ATM for Bitcoin. And, and it's not for a fetch. We, we might be the bank that does that. We, we like technology. And if we can do it, we, we should look at that. But that's the way we, we need to we'll think. We'll have to bring you back for another show to discuss cryptocurrencies and what you think can happen in Belize. So what do you envision in the future of the banking system in Belize, like increased cooperation of tech? As more and more technology is incorporated into, into the banking system, what do you envision happening? Well, the next step is go that's going to happen after the mandate management with the APS3 is a project that will uh, create a national switch. That will help immensely. Um, right now you go to, a, to your grocery store and there's a terminal for each of the four banks out there lying there. Okay. The national switch will just pull and you probably just have one. Okay. okay. But looking further into the future, I see where Belize and the, the rest of the Caribbean will have to get into uh, digitalizing their, their currencies. And my main reason for liking that approach is that uh, right now we're subject to the vagaries of the correspondent banks in the US. Yes, we are. And uh, Visa, MasterCard, these, these first world uh, uh, entities. Mm -hmm. And you never know when they're going to pull the plug on you. And if we create a, a network with digital currencies within the Caribbean, it can uh, help with the shock, shock waves that come from that sort of okay. uh, adverse effect from out there. And we can probably still do settlements and keep it within a loop, a closed loop with us. And those are good things to have. It's always good to have a closed loop mm -hmm. because then you keep control of it. When you're using a loop that is out there, it's at the vagaries of those people. So that, that is how I see it and, um, from my point of view. Mr. Lichy, you have anything you want to add or has he said enough for you? <laughs> okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to thank you for appearing on Tech Talk. We're now at the close of the BizTech segment. Before you leave, um, we want to give you an opportunity to share anything else you, you might have. You said something in the beginning that there's something exciting that you wanted to talk about, but you don't seem like you really want to talk about it. So maybe we have to invite you back so you can... I would say so. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, folks, uh, we now go to our final commercial break. But stay tuned because the show gets even more exciting when we return. Tech Talk is brought to you by the Public Utilities Commission.
Welcome back to Tech Talk. We're now at the part of the show where we, things get really fun. We have Corey waiting to share some electric tech news. Corey? 30 years ago, most people relied on wristwatches to tell the time. How lame. It's only natural that your wristwatch should be a mini computer. I'm Corey Leslie, and I'm here with another installment of Tech News, sponsored by RFNG Insurance, a Row Group company. I don't know if it's something in the water down at the planning and design labs at Apple, but they're tapping into some tech ideas that will surely change the game for gadget lovers. The latest tech buzz is that Apple has been considering adding a camera in the Apple Watch's band and have even included it in their new patented design. The design illustrates that an optical sensor will be placed at the end of the flexible strap, allowing for a quick and easy photo op on the go. Disclaimer, Apple is not promoting spying. Camera use will be made easy and accessible by pulling the strap of the watch upward to photograph what's in front of you or fold it back on itself to take a selfie. That way you don't have to be twisting your wrist every time you want to snap a pic of what's for dinner. Hashtag do it for the gram. So it's the waiting game now and we'll see if this new patent leads to a brand new tech toy. And as if the potential new Apple Watch wasn't exciting enough, wait till you hear what they're doing with Sony and Microsoft. Look alive, gamers. Xbox One and PS4 controller support is coming to your iPhones, your iPads, and your Apple TVs pretty soon. This is a big step up from the M5 Bluetooth controllers that have been supported before. Now, it's like you'll have a portable console with you so long as you keep those devices charged up. Basically, you don't have to pause your game anymore when heading for an emergency bathroom break. While all the PS4 DualShock controllers support Bluetooth and will work fully, you'll need to check if your Xbox One controller is Bluetooth compatible before gearing up to do your gaming. It's as if those Sony and Microsoft have a couple of psychics on their teams because Sony launched its PS4 Remote Play app when iOS 13 came out, which allows you to stream games from your console directly to your iPhone or iPad. Just turn on the controllers and you're ready to go. Microsoft is following the trend and is scheduled to release their own console streaming remote play solution in October. I can't even imagine what these tech giants are going to do next. Soon we'll be able to cook entire meals in bed with our TV remotes. If you hear about that in the near future, remember, you heard it here first. Finally, we all know that presentations can be hard. Public speaking is a fear of many people, and a lot of us use Microsoft PowerPoint to help us with a little bit of much needed backup. Well, guess what? PowerPoint is now aiming to go above and beyond by using artificial intelligence to help coach you in your public speaking. It's called Presenter Coach, and she will provide you with helpful tips like letting you know when you're saying um too much, and she'll even help you with your pacing so you don't rush through your presentation. You don't have to picture everyone in their underwear anymore. This is such a helpful way to be prepared without having to ask your coworker or classmate to coach you when you know that they'd rather be doing just about anything else. At the end of your run through together, presenter coach shows you how well you did in terms of pacing, word choice, confidence, and more. Microsoft is planning to roll this feature out for PowerPoint on the web first, but it should make its way to your desktop and app versions by the end of the summer. Now go out there and kill that boring meeting presentation. Well, I know this has been fun, but we're now at the end of today's tech news. Be sure to tune in to Tech Talk every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. for tech news and more. Until then, adios. Thank you, Corey. I feel as if though the excitement given by the new tech is often doused by a bit of fear of what can go wrong. You know, for example, Apple teasing the release of this stealthy camera in the band of their watches. There's no doubt a ton of people will use it for mischief and even crime. Persons will record unwilly, um, unwillingly. Security pr protocols can be compromised, you know, you're in an area you're not supposed to have a camera and you have a camera on your watch. The list can go on, but at least the selfies are gonna be easier, right? Now we continue with more tech news and we move over to Alana, our tech tips correspondent. Alana? If we can have self-driving cars, there's no reason for us to go all the way to an office just to get account information about our mobile phone plans. Hi everyone, 
It's me again, Alana, and I'm here with some more tech tips. At this point in the digital world, convenience is oxygen. It's either easy to do or it's toxic. Hashtag slightly dramatic. My first tech tip for tonight, download the new DigiGo app. Before, if you wanted to access some Digi support without traveling to an office, you'd have to dial star 100, star 200, star 300, and remember the entire galaxy of stars, basically. But with the new DigiGo app, everything is literally right at your fingertips. The app makes managing your account easy peasy. You can check your account balance, you can monitor your data usage, send credit, beg for credit, chat with a representative, and even more. Since Digi is proud of their new baby, they keep running exclusive promotions on the apps, such as giving you four times the amount of texts that you've paid for. If only this promo could have been extended to ice cream parlors. All you have to do to enjoy this new account management experience is to download the app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. And it's all free. After registering, boom, you're set. Thanks, Digi. And my second and final tech tip for today Ignore the myth that you shouldn't charge your phone until the battery is dead. Viewers, it's 2019. We no longer depend on bushfire technology. You don't need to wait for your laptop or phone to fully die before charging it, nor do you need to constantly swipe apps away. It's 2019. Batteries and devices have come a long way. Draining your whole battery before recharging only made sense with an older nickel cadmium battery but smartphones and laptops today mostly use lithium ion. No matter what you do, all batteries will fully die eventually. They're replaceable at most electronic stores, or you can use it as an excuse to upgrade to the latest phone. The battery life will probably be longer. Okay, viewers, I hope these tech tips will be helpful to you in all your cell phone struggles. See you again next week for all new tech tips sponsored by Digi. Wow. Thank you, Alana. Got that app. We know trends show that most big companies have opted to introduce apps to bolster their customer service experience. When you think of it, reducing the long lines in your office and speeding up the time it takes for customers to get help is a sure way to expand your market presence and to keep your existing customers, like me, happy. So kudos to Digi. Well, we're now at the end of our episode three of Tech Talk, and I'd like to thank everyone who tuned in. Hope you had much more informed view of the world of tech and thriving right here in Belize. I'd once again like to thank our guests, Mr. Alamina, Mr. Magana, Ms. Medina from the National Bank of Belize. And of course, a big thank you is owed to Corey and Alana, our tech correspondents, and our sponsors, the Public Utilities Commission, Digi, and RFNG Insurance Company. Catch us again next week, Tuesday, and every Tuesday after at 8 p.m. on Channel 7 and on our Facebook page, Colorblind Multimedia. Until then, Good night.